Howdy folks, Mr. Chinley here to go over some, uh, well, an introduction to the next unit after our, now that we've covered uh, Newton's laws and circular motion and gravity, we're going to introduce you to kinematics a little bit today. So this will be a little introduction to kinematics. Kinematics means the study of motion, things that are moving. So it'll be, it should kind of flow into what we've been studying already. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. We got two different kinds of kinematics that we're going to talk about. The first kind of kinematics is going to be something called free fall. And free fall is pretty straightforward. You kind of get an idea of what it sounds, what it is just from the name free fall. Um, an object is in free fall if the only force acting on it, on the object, is gravity. If the only force on it is gravity, then we can say, that, okay, that object is in free fall. We're going to ignore all kinds of air resistance in this class. We're not going to deal with air resistance in any way whatsoever, uh, as we've discussed before. So if an object is flying through the air, you throw a ball to your friend, or your hang gliding, or whatever the case it would be pretty hard to hang glide without air resistance. But um, you know what I mean. If something flies through the air, whatever. We're not going to deal with air resistance at all. Okay. And of course, we got non free fall problems, and these are problems would be like a car driving down the road, or you're on a skateboard, or you're on a bike, or um, you know something like that. If you're not falling through the air, then we'll call that non free fall. And this is when there are other forces, um, including gravity, but not just the. It's, there'll be more forces than just gravity. All right, other forces will be involved, like right? friction, the normal force, things like that. Okay, so we want to talk about them separately because there are certain kinds of rules uh, that we'll talk about, and the way we'll, we solve the problems will depend on what kind of problem that it is. Um, so first things first here, that gravity affects all objects in, the in, the, in free fall the same. So it doesn't matter if you drop a tennis ball or a bowling ball or you know a giant boulder, right? Everything's going to fall at the same rate. And I'll show you a video about this, um, how we know this is. Um, so I'm going to show you two videos here. So this first one is uh, a video from the BBC Science Channel. Um, Brian Cox is who's a, uh, a PhD physicist yeah, from Great Britain. Here's they have this apparatus set up here. They got a, I think it's a bowling ball or some sort of some sort of really heavy ball here, and then feathers. And for first videos, we're going to show you uh, what it looks like. Um, um, with with air, okay, there is air in the chamber uh, in this first video. So let's play this one. They're gonna release it, and again, there is air here. And of course, we see the ball falls straight down, crashes in. A few seconds here come the feathers, slowly drifting down because of the air is in the way and it's pushing up against the feathers. Right, the air is in the way, so uh, because the bowling ball is so much denser, it just pushes right through the air, whereas the feathers are very light and the air affects them a lot more. So now what they did, they pumped all the air out of the out of that big chamber they were in. So they made it what's called a vacuum chamber. So a vacuum in science is when you have an area that is void of any particles. It has no air in it, no particles of any kind. We call this a vacuum, okay? So if there's, a, uh, if there's no air, this is what happens with no air. So they're gonna release the same scenario exactly, but now no air, and watch what happens. And they fall exactly side by side the entire time you see the feathers are not floating and drifting up like they did before because there's no air in the chamber to push them up all the air has been sucked out of the room they fall down and they collide at exactly the same time um, and their, their reaction from the scientists because they're like, oh. even though they knew it was going to happen, it's still kind of cool to see. So, all right, that gives us a, a really good idea of how gravity affects everything at the same time. So gravity, uh, when things are falling and they're in free fall, it doesn't matter. Again, in this class, we're going to ignore air resistance. So it doesn't matter if you're um, a feather or a ball, bowling ball, whatever the thing is. Everything is going to accelerate down towards Earth at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is what we call this special number right here. It's very special. We call this uh, we call this G. All right, G equals uh, 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. But if you go to some some other planet or like the Moon, the number will be different. So G G is the acceleration, the acceleration. So it's like how fast you speed up, right? Due to gravity. Okay, a lot of students will say, "Oh, G is gravity. G isn't gravity. G is the acceleration due to gravity, or because of gravity." Right? Gravity's pulling us down, and of course, it forces cause things to accelerate. G is the acceleration caused by gravity. Right? Of course, it always points down, straight down to the earth, just like we do 
we draw arrows from the force of gravity, it's going to be the same direction, right? Going straight down to the center of the Earth. That's the direction that the acceleration will point for objects in free fall. This is for free fall objects only. All right, so there's a number you're going to want to remember, 9.8 meters second squared, always down. And again, the, we're going to say g a lot, this little g. Um, again, it's an acceleration due to gravity. It is 9.8 on Earth. And since we deal with Earth most of the time, it's a number again you're going to want to remember. All right, so what um, if objects are not in free fall, then A must be determined through other means. And we're going to give you all the equations to deal with problems like that. So it's say like, oh, you're on a bicycle and you're going this fast and you slow down. Like, what's the acceleration? Of course, it's not going to be 9.8 because you're not in free fall. So uh, it will be in free fall. I'm sorry, if you are in free fall, it'll be 9.8. But if you're not, it's going to be something else. And you got to figure out what that is. All right. And we'll give you the means to do that. We'll show you the equation. I'm going to do it right now because it's supposed to be that kind of an introduction video. But we'll do that later on in class. All right, so let's consider um, an object thrown straight up into the air. So I want to throw an object at, I'm, I'm going to throw a ball right, straight up into the air. And the initial velocity is going to be 30 meters a second. Now remember, if, if g, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, is 10 meters a second squared pointing straight down, how does that affect the motion of the ball? So initially, I throw it up at 30 meters a second. So when it leaves my hand, the moment it leaves my hand, it's going 30 meters a second up. Now remember, what this acceleration means is that it's the change in velocity every second. So if our velocity is changing by 10 meters a second every second in the downward direction, how does that affect my velocity? So at t equals 0, my velocity is 30, right? That's when it left my hand. But one second later, at t equals 1, it's only 20, right? It went down by 10. The velocity is changing in the downward direction by 10. So I lost 10 velocity. And at t equals 2, I'm now at 10 meters a second. And then at t equals 3, I'm now at 0. I have no velocity at the peak. So at the peak, we say it actually has no velocity. It stops for an instant, a moment in time it stops, and then before it begins to fall back down again. At t equals 4, now I'm gaining velocity in the downward direction. Now I'm from 0 to 10. At t equals 5, this is 5 seconds later, I'm at 20 meters a second. And you kind of see how they're mirror images of each other, just in different directions. At t equals 6, I'm at 30 meters a second. I'm at the same velocity I was at initially, just in the other direction. So because g is 10, all right, I'm my velocity is changing by 10 every second in the downward direction. So from 30 to 20 to 10 to 0, and then down 10, down 20, down 30, kind of going back one now that we're falling. Okay, so that's the idea um, of when we throw objects straight up in the air. We'll have problems. We see the a ball or whatever's thrown straight up in the air. Now I want to talk about this spot right here just for a second. It's an important spot. We call that the peak, right? The peak of the trajectory. When the ball is at its peak, there are some interesting things. Now the velocity at the peak at this spot right here, the velocity is zero, right? It actually is not moving at that moment. For, a, for one instant of time, it is zero velocity. But I'm going to ask you next, what is the acceleration at that spot? What is the acceleration of the ball or whatever, the rock, at this position at the peak? What is the acceleration at that moment? Okay, so yeah, it's actually 9.8, right? It's 9.8, it's always 9.8, right? If the object is in free fall, gravity does not get turned off at the peak. It's always 9.8, which I rounded it to 10 here. I'm sorry, I should have said that. I rounded this to 10 um, when I was doing this just because it tends easier to add up than 9.8. But, you know, so just, just for simplicity's sake. But 9.8 is the more correct answer. So the, the, the acceleration at every point it's always 9.8 right or 10 whatever it's always 9.8 down the entire time even at the peak when it has a velocity a lot of students want to say oh doesn't it have no acceleration there because it's not moving at that at that spot no it still has acceleration down of 9.8 because gravity is always pulling us down even if we're at the peak of the trajectory so what might a graph of this motion look like so i want you to think i'm going to You'll see the answer. All right, now we came back. So, yeah, so it depends on what we're talking about. If it's a position time graph, position time graph, then we're going to look like this, right? It's going to kind of look almost like, you know, up in the back down, kind of parabolic. But if it's a velocity time graph, it's going to look more like this. Okay. The reason why is because we initially had 30 meters a second of velocity over here, right? 30 meters of positive 30. So we start up. We start up high on the graph because we have a large positive velocity in the, initially. You see that our number gets smaller, 20, and then 10, and then 0. So we're going down we're going down on the y-axis here, 20, and then 10, and then we're at 0. And then we start to get 
down 10, down 20. Remember, direction means uh, sign changes from positive to negative. So now we're going to be negative 10 over here, and then negative 20, and then negative 30, and so on. So this is what the graph would look like on a velocity time graph for um, for a ball. You throw it straight up in the air, and this, might, what look, might, this is what it would look like for a position time graph for a ball you throw straight up in the air. And again, this one's pretty... Um, pretty clear we go on our ball goes up in the air but it slows down and then it comes back down but it speeds up on the way down this, I could draw this better but you get the idea something like that okay alright um, what about an object thrown horizontally from the top of a building or cliff so in a problem like this we're actually gonna need to think about two where it's actually really kind of two problems in one and the reason why is because it's gonna have motion horizontally but it's also gonna have motion vertically all right, so um, be, I want to ask you this: As the ball falls, all right, down like this, how does the horizontal velocity change? Um, what forces are acting on the ball in the horizontal direction? And the answer is none. There are no forces acting on the ball in the horizontal direction, which means then that the horizontal velocity will not change. The horizontal velocity will always be, in this example, 20 meters a second, because there are no forces to change its velocity, and objects in motion stay in motion. So the horizontal velocity will stay what the horizontal velocity is because there are no forces to change it. Nothing's speeding it up and nothing's slowing it down. However, it will actually gain vertical velocity over time because it is going to be accelerating in the downward direction because of gravity. So in a problem like this, which you'll have one or two on the exam that's going to be coming up after we do rockets and everything, and a problem like this, we're going to need to solve for time first. So it's really kind of, like I said, it's two problems in one. The first thing we want to do is solve, is solve for time. How long is this ball going to be in the air for? All right? And we'll give you the equations to do that. And I'll go ahead and show you one real quick. It's going to be, it it's, comes from this equation here. So delta D equals um, V initial time plus one half A T squared. Now this, this equation, and it's going to seem... Uh, kind of long and, and arduous to you, but it's not it's not really too bad. If we think about this just in the vertical direction, if we think about, okay, what's my initial vertical velocity? It's actually zero, because I didn't have any uh, initial vertical up and down velocity. I only had horizontal velocity in, in the beginning. I didn't have any vertical. So this whole term is just going to go away. It's going to be just a zero. So I'm left with delta D. Delta D is my distance. Uh, in this case, it's my uh, vertical distance. Uh, equals one-half a t squared. And I want to solve for t, so I'm going to times 2 both sides. I'm going to end up with, I'm just going to give you the equation. It's going to be 2 times the height of the building where I start at, or cliff or whatever it is, um, divided by the acceleration, and that's all going to be square rooted, and that's going to be my t. So first we'd use this equation to solve for t. Once we know what t is, then we can do a second equation that's going to be uh, delta d equals velocity times time. So this will be my horizontal displacement or distance my velocity in the horizontal direction which is 20 times whatever times time whatever answer I got from here will be plugged in up to here and that will allow me to find how far the ball goes horizontally away from the base of the building from when I threw the ball so it just might seem pretty complicated to you now but we're going to go with some more detail later but maybe some of y'all can kind of get a, get a, a little idea of what you'll be seeing here in a few weeks uh, okay so Let's try one problem real quick. Uh, let's say you're at the top of a 25, <coughs> pardon me, at the top of a 25 high meter building, and you throw a rock horizontally off the top at 12 meters a second. How far will the ball go before it lands? So if you were, if you're sharp, you're paying attention, you're, you get the math down. I'll give you the equations again. So time is going to equal the square root of two times the height of the building divided by the acceleration due to gravity. This is all. Make sure you put all that in the in the in the square root sign there. Um, and then the distance the ball goes is going to be velocity times time. So you got to solve this problem first, get the time the ball's in the air for, or the rock, whatever it is. Once you know how long the ball's in the air for, then you plug it in for the horizontal velocity. Now remember, this here is only for horizontal. You can't plug in anything that's not horizontal here. So you got to ask yourself, what's the horizontal velocity? And this problem up here is only for vertical. So you got to ask yourself, okay, what is kind of my vertical information? What is the vertical... <clears throat> I could write vertical. What is the vertical height? All right. What is the vertical acceleration? Remember, we don't have any acceleration in the horizontal. We only have acceleration 
in the vertical direction because of gravity. So it's going to be 9.8. How high is the building? Plug that in, get your time, and then do that. So let's see if you can get the answer on that one. And then, um, okay, so what about problems where we're not dealing with a free fall? Let's say we're just riding our bike, or in this case, we're driving a car um, at 13 meters a second, and you slow down to a stop over four seconds. How far do you travel during that four seconds? So again, a lot of these problems are going to be two steps. They won't always be two steps, but this one is also two steps. If you want to find out how far I traveled, I'm going to need to find the acceleration. So acceleration is the change in my velocity change my velocity divided by time how much did my velocity change well I was going from 13 to a stop so 13 to 0 so my acceleration is a negative 13 because I slowed down divided by my time which is 4 seconds so my acceleration is actually going to be let's see uh, 13 over 4 negative 3.25 and again it's negative because I'm slowing down right and then we'll get equations like this one uh, where my displacement equals again my initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared and earlier I, you saw me write this problem down for a free fall situation we can use this equation for any situation so long as we have the information that's required do we have the acceleration well i do now do i have the time yeah that was four seconds do i have my initial velocity yeah that was 13. so i'm going to solve for my displacement here using this equation so you go ahead and see if you can plug those numbers in and uh, get the answer Okay, so uh, now that you now that you're back, in case you didn't get it right, the displacement and delta d here is again saying for displacement, or we can say distance. Really, it's okay. Thirteen times four uh, plus oops, it's a, plus one half. A is negative three point two. That negative sign is very important here to consider. Times four squared. Plug all that all that stuff in, and I'm going to get see, thirteen times four is fifty two. And it's going to be minus a 4 squared is 16 times 3.25, negative 3.25 times a half, which is 26. So 52 minus 26. So my distance is going to be 26. 52 minus 26 is a positive 26. So at 26 meters is how far this uh, car will go while stopping. All right. So that's, you know, about 75-ish feet or so. Um, okay. So that's pretty much it here um, this is we're gonna be using a lot of the math uh, formula so if you're someone who likes formulas and math it'll you'll, you'll enjoy this unit um, the key things to remember here are again that everything falls at the same rate if an object is in free fall doesn't matter what it is it's gonna fall down towards the earth with an acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared and of course that acceleration is because of the force of gravity right um, if we have, so here's an example again of a of object being thrown up in the air, up in the air and coming back down. And some important things to remember here is kind of how the acceleration affects the velocity. Uh, you know, so it's slowing down like 30, and then 20, 10, 0. And I, I use 10 here just for simplicity's sake, although we will be using 9.8 in class. I rounded it up just as an example. But at, the important part to remember is at the peak here that the velocity is 0, but the acceleration is always going to be 9.8 pointing down. And then we have some graphs. And it's important to remember what these graphs might look like because you'll be asked about that as well. And then we did some uh, problem where we had uh, a ball being thrown horizontally off of a cliff or a building or whatever it was. And then we did one quick example where we're driving a car. It's not a free fall problem. So we can't just assume G is, or the acceleration is 9.8. Acceleration is 9.8 on free fall problems where we got a ball or a rock flying through the air or a bullet or an arrow or whatever. But the acceleration will be some other value that's not 9.8 for problems where you're driving a car or you're in a bike or riding a bike or whatever. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully that was you know get kind of a little primer, get you ready for the next unit, even though it's still a week away since we're going to do rockets first, but kind of uh, maybe an introduction. So when you see this stuff next week, it won't be too too unfamiliar or crazy. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and you have a great day. Bye.